You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. In his first act, Speaker Mike Johnson uses Israel aid to pick a fight with Joe Biden. Yes! Finally, somebody that wants to fight, man. I was getting so sick and tired of these yellow-bellied, spineless cowards that we call Republicans inside of our house, not willing to fight. And we finally got somebody. So the newly minted Republican speaker is seeking to pay for aid to Israel by slashing, you ready for this, $14.3 billion from IRS funds in the Democratic president's signature law, the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes. So Speaker Mike Johnson is taking money away from the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRS, the 87,000 agents, the $80 billion that just got pumped to the IRS. So in order to pay for aid for Israel, they're going to take it from the IRS, the bloated, wasteful, ineffective, and inefficient IRS. Take it away. That's exactly what he's doing, and that's exactly what should happen. So in his first major move, House Speaker Mike Johnson is using the bipartisan goal of providing aid to Israel to pick a fight with President Joe Biden over his signature achievement. I do not consider the Inflation Reduction Act an achievement. I consider it a gigantic lie sold to the American people that absolutely destroyed this place. That's what I call that. What the, what the Inflation Reduction Act did actually increased inflation. But why did they call it the Inflation Reduction Act if they knew it was going to increase inflation? How did they know it was going to increase inflation? Because the Congressional Budget Office came out before they passed the bill and said this will increase inflation. But the Biden administration did it anyways, and they needed a name for it. And so what did they do? They polled the American people. What is the number one concern of the American people right now? Oh, well, it's inflation, sir. Good. We'll call this bill the Inflation Reduction Act. Send it through. That should keep them off our backs for a while. And that's exactly what they did, knowing it was going to increase inflation. And now look where we're at. And they call that an achievement. An achievement to who? To Joe and Mika? To NBC? To CNN? To Jake Tapper? To Joe Biden? Who is an achievement for? Because it sure in the hell isn't an achievement for the American people. It is a failure. It was a stick that was dropped in front of the American people to trip them. That's what the Inflation Reduction Act was. It was the exact opposite of an achievement. Okay? But being how we've been in opposite world for the last three years, I could see why they call it an achievement. So a new bill House Republicans released Monday includes $14.3 billion in emergency funding for Israel while rescinding the same amount of IRS funding from the Inflation Reduction Act, a major climate, health care, and tax law Biden signed last year. Oh, did I say this was a ABC article? <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you couldn't tell. With the words achievement and climate, healthcare, and tax law, it is garbage. Okay? The Inflation Reduction Act hurt American people. It hurt this country. Period. And so I could care less if you're going to fund Israel with the monstrosity they call the Inflation Reduction Act. The epic failure. Go ahead, fund Israel, send them, take the money from the IRS and give it to Israel. I don't care. I would rather my money go to Israel to help them eradicate a terrorist organization than $14 billion going to the IRS that's probably going to audit me next year. Okay? So no, it's going to cause me, I don't know, probably $3,000 in attorneys. Who knows? Who knows? This is, but this is what's going to start happening here soon. Regular Americans are going to start getting audited by the IRS. Why? Because the IRS just got an $80 billion budget increase with 87,000 employees. So, yeah, I could give a flying rip. And I guarantee you ask any other American if they care if $14 billion is taken away from the IRS. They're not going to care either. So go ahead. Take it from the IRS. 
If the bill passes the GOP-controlled House, the IRS provisions are all but guaranteed to be rejected by the Democratic-led Senate and White House. Good. Good. This is exactly what should happen. Get this bill passed in the House, send it over to the worthless Democrats in the Senate that haven't done anything for the last three years, send it over to the White House, and say, this is the deal, take it or leave it. If you don't want it, then that means you don't want to send money to Israel, and then you can explain to the American people why their government is shutting down. But as far as printing more money, uh uh-uh, not doing it. Shut it down. We don't care. Shut it down. I personally don't care, folks. I don't, I don't know why any American would, would give a rat's ass if the government shut down. Every single day this government is in session is another day you lose more of your freedoms, is another day you go more into debt, is another day that you're spied on, is another day that they spend more money. Shut it down. Who cares? Honestly, who cares? The only people that care about a government shutdown is people that are getting money from the government. Security, Social Security checks still go out. Everybody still gets funded. We need to go into more debt to keep the national parks open? No, not buying it. Why doesn't the White House ask the American people? Ask them. Be like, hey, what do you think about taking money from the IRS and giving it to Israel? What do you think about that? They're going to be like, yeah, go ahead, do it. Because we're not sinking, we're drowning out here. So go right ahead, take it from the IRS. So Johnson defended his move to slash IRS funding in the first draft of this bill to grant new Israel aid, even if it alienates Democrats. I don't know why Democrats care anyways. Half the party are a bunch of anti-Semites. So why does why does Democrat why do Democrats even care whether Israel gets aid or not? I mean, why would a party filled with anti-Semites actually care if Israel got aid or not? Why are we even negotiating with them? It's clear that they don't care about what happens to the Jews over there. At least half of them don't. The Democrat Party is the party of anti-Semitism. So why would we negotiate with a party of anti-Semitism about sending money to Israel, to the Jews? I mean, it's just, it's, it's mind-blowing. And so the White House pushed back, accusing Republicans of trying to, quote, help the wealthy and big corporations cheat on their taxes <laughs> with a proposal that would grow the deficit. Oh, it would grow the deficit, huh? Yeah, you explain that one to me, buddy. You explain to me how slashing and taking money from the IRS is going to increase the deficit. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know what? That's 87,000 IRS agents that you just hired. Well, now you only get to hire 40. And all that money, all that $14 billion can go right to Israel. It is so sick that these people gaslight and lie to the American people like this. Right to their faces. Accusing Republicans of helping the wealthy and big corporations. Folks, the only people that have benefited from the Biden administration are rich, wealthy people. Does anybody think that's going to change anytime soon? During the Biden administration has been the largest transfer of wealth in human history. Okay? I don't think the wealthy and big corporations that are cheating on their taxes care. Okay? Why don't they care? Because they're rich, wealthy elites that don't cheat on their taxes, but pay multi-million dollar law firms to do their taxes for them. So you're not getting them. I'm sorry, you're not. The only people this is going to fall on is the middle class. That's right, you, me, we're going to end up having to flip the bill for this one. Why? Because you don't need 87,000 IRS agents to audit the rich and wealthy. Sorry, you don't. And I don't care how many audits you do, it's not going to matter. These people will wrap up any tax case you have for 20 or 30 years in the courts. They know what they're doing. But it's not, it has nothing to do with taxing the wealthy or the rich. This has everything to do with funding their disgusting money laundering scheme. And so just like I suggested, have the House pass the bill, send it over to the worthless Senate, the Democrats that haven't done anything, pass it over to the White House and say, here you go, take it or leave it. If you don't want it, then explain to the American people why the government's shutting down. But as far as printing new money, we ain't doing it. And so I think it's, I think it's incredible that Mike Johnson has actually taken the fight to the Biden administration. It is about damn time, man. About damn time. 
and all this to protect the IRS? Like, ask the American people, hey, do you care what happens to the IRS? What do you think they're going to say? No, not really. No, sure don't. In fact, I would, uh, I would prefer a smaller IRS. That's right. Why? Because the bigger the IRS gets is the more audits the American people are going to get. And the left might say, no, 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 that's, that's a lie. No, they're not. They're not coming after middle class. They're only going, they're only going after people that make 400000 or over. You sure about that? How confident are you? Because what if I told you I had audio from Janet Yellen admitting exactly what's going to happen? Here, check this out. Thank you, Secretary Yellen. Uh, our time is short here, so I'll try to be quick in answering some very uh, concise uh, questions. We have serious uh, concerns about the impact that the $80 billion uh, that the IRS is receiving and its impact on families and small businesses. There are concerns uh, about the funding uh, stemming from the fact that we're working from disparate statements uh, from the administration. So I'm glad you're here to uh, help clarify. 2021, the Treasury released, released an analysis uh, right here uh, that states $80 billion in additional IRS funding would be used to increase the total headcount at IRS compared to 2021 by almost 87,000 employees over the next decade. Is that accurate? Is that correct? The, the vast majority of those hires are to replace attrition people who would be retiring. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's the first lie. There is the first deceivement onto the American people. This is how Democrats get their talking points. They get their talking points from the people spreading the lies. And Janet Yellen is one of those people spreading those lies. So listen to what she just said, and then listen to Representative Smith absolutely debunk her in real time. Here we go. Is that accurate? Is that correct? The, the vast majority of those hires are to replace attrition people who would be retiring. So, okay, um, so the, the attrition is about 12,000 uh, no, personnel it's, over it's the last over 10 years. Over 10 years, it's much larger than that. Okay, okay. The, the record reflects that the headcount decreased by 12,000 over the last decade. So that was. <laughs> there it is, folks. So she tried pulling a fast one. She said, oh, no, that's not for the year. That's, that's 12000 for the year. Once you do that for 10 years, I mean, the 87000 you know, that's, that's a lot more than 12000 And he just, And he just pulled out the report right in front of her and said, wait a minute. The attrition, the headcount, the retirement is 12000 over a 10-year period. So it's not much more than 12000 It's 12000 So <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. Here we go. Would leave us at seventy-five thousand new personnel uh, at our at IRS. So I, ju I just uh, want the record to reflect that. Now, regarding the audits, and the chairman uh, talked a, a bit about this. Uh, there's been confusion about the meaning of the directive that, that you cited uh, in the letter uh, last August, and then repeated here today. So, are you talking about the total number of audits, or are you talking about the proportion of audits on families and small businesses? Uh, under $400,000. I'm talking about the proportion of those um, small businesses and families. Okay, so um, the proportion, I mean, just for the record, the proportion is 90%. So 90% of the new audits uh, will be, you know, according to, according to the data, that we can expect uh, up to 90% of new audits uh, to, to be on those uh, making less than $400,000. The, the purpose now, of this legislation is to vastly increase the audit rates yes, yes, on we understand. high income, high wealth, uh, right, but there, but partnerships. The, but the data reflects that it, it's broader than that, especially given the number of, of personnel. But the uh, shifting extent gears. The number of taxpayers I, I understand. In okay. earning less than $400,000 increases well, the, the, the audit rates. The rates risk of audit. Not the rates of audit rise. and the commitments, you know, are certain. There you go. So wait a minute, folks. I thought the Biden administration and all the Democrats told everybody it was only going to be people making over 400000 a year that were going to be getting all these audits. Well, no, according to their own data, their own data says that 90 percent, it broadens the spectrum by 90 percent, which means 
90% of the audits they're going to be doing are going to be small businesses and middle class families. That's exactly what they said. That is in their own report. So 10% of the IRS, the new hires, 10% of the 87,000 IRS agents are going to be going after the rich and wealthy, which again, I already explained to you, the rich and wealthy don't care about this. Why? Because they have multi-million dollar law firms, tax law firms that will wrap this stuff up in court for three decades. They are not worried about this. So guess what's going to happen? 75,000 of those 87,000 employees, they're going to have to get their money from somewhere. And where is that going to be from? Us, me, you, small businesses, and small families making under $400,000 a year. Everything these people tell you is a lie. It is a lie. So while Democrats are out there shouting from the rooftops how much they want to fund the IRS, just remember this conversation, mark it down. It's 1031, it's Halloween at 9.30 p.m. You will get audited. And I don't want to hear it. I do not want to hear it from Democrats on Twitter, on social media, about them complaining because they're being audited by the IRS and they have to come up with three to $5,000 to hire a tax attorney, okay? I don't want to hear it from any of them because you guys are the ones that were shouting from the rooftops supporting every bit of this because you're a bunch of bootlickers. You are bootlickers. What kind of insane citizen wants to increase the IRS by 87,000 employees and actually thinks they're not going to be impacted? It is moronic. It is stupefying. Okay? So I don't want to hear it. And not only do I have audio from Janet Yellen pretty much admitting that, yeah, yeah, 90% is probably pretty much going to be getting audited that make under 400000 a year. So I got an article here from the Daily Signal. Which Americans are most likely to get audited by IRS under the Inflation Reduction Act? So tax audits for middle-class Americans would skyrocket with final passage of the Inflation Reduction Act predicts a congressman who focuses on the federal budget and helped craft the Trump tax cuts. Representative Kevin Brady from Texas, ranking member of the House Ways and Means Committee, says he expects a surge in tax audits by the Internal Revenue Service as a result of the Democrats' bill, which passed through the Senate on Sunday after Vice President Kamala Harris cast a tie-breaking vote. Wow, what a great bill. A, it's such a good bill. The vice president had to shove it down our throats with a tie-breaking vote. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that bill's going to go great for everybody. The spending plan would allocate $80 billion for the IRS over six times the agency's current budget. Much of this money would pay for 87,000 new IRS agents to enforce the tax code. In a press release, Brady used IRS data to estimate that the Democrats' bill, if passed as is, would amount to 1.2 million new audits of taxpayers per year. Over 710,000 of these audits would fall on Americans who earn $75,000 a year or less, the Texas Republicans said. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said Tuesday that Americans making less than $400,000 a year would not be targeted for new audits under the Democrats' plan. President Joe Biden and the IRS Commissioner Charles Redding have made similar statements. Despite these claims, Brady argued that the Inflation Reduction Act would, quote, hit made-in-America businesses, small businesses, and workers who always bear the brunt of higher taxes. These are families where every dime counts. They're getting crushed by inflation and higher fuel prices just to drive to the store. They will bear the brunt of these new audits, Brady said in an interview Monday on Fox News Channel. So Brady cited a Congressional Budget Office analysis showing the IRS audit rates would increase for all taxpayers. The analysis from the Independent Budget Office estimated the IRS revenue would increase by $200 billion over the next decade. According to a Senate Finance Committee report, $45.6 billion of the additional $80 billion would go toward enforcement. Hence, the Congressional Budget Office's projection that IRS staff would more than double over the next 10 years. I don't know about you folks, but that doesn't sound good to me at all. I'm pretty sure Israel could probably use that money a lot more than the IRS. What do you think? I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm just throwing that out there, and I have more evidence. 
if that doesn't sway you, if you still think that only the rich and wealthy are going to be affected by these audits, then how about some common sense? So if the IRS is not targeting the middle or lower class, then why are they tracking payments of $600 or more on places like Venmo and Zelle, the third-party cash apps? Why would they track $600 payments if they're going to be going after the rich and wealthy? Hmm. That's weird, huh? And so I got an article here from Forbes. This came out in March of 2023. The IRS delays requiring Venmo cash app and other payment apps to report payments of $600 or more. So I don't get it. If they're only targeting the rich and the wealthy, then why track payments of $600? Is that how the rich and wealthy are are becoming rich and wealthy? Is through Venmo payments of $600? And if it's so good, then why would the Biden administration delay it? So payment apps such as Cash App and Venmo have been given extra time to implement a change that will require them to report more consumer payment information to the IRS. Their current law requires the companies to report payments if they're in the tens of thousands of dollars and if numerous transactions are completed during the year. A 2021 law called for revising the tax reporting requirements for the apps which are formerly known as third-party settlement organizations. Under the law, the apps were supposed to send users a Form 1099-K, payment card and third-party network transactions, for transactions of as little as $600 for payment of goods and services during the 2022 tax year. However, the IRS announced late in 2022 that it would delay the new lower reporting requirements until the 2024 tax filing season. So under the current law, The law that's in right now, the IRS requires third-party settlement organizations to issue a Form 1099-K to report certain payment transactions that meet both of these reporting thresholds. Gross payments that exceed $20,000, more than 200 transactions within the year. So they decreased it from $20,000 to $600. I don't know about you folks, but that sounds an awful lot like they're coming after the middle class and small businesses. $600? Like if you're going after the rich and wealthy, wouldn't you think of maybe keeping it at 20000 I don't know about you, but I don't think the rich and wealthy, I don't think they're getting richer off of $600 Venmo payments. Just a common sense, uh, just a common sense observation there. And all this data is available for everybody to look at. So for the Democrats out there cheering and, and rooting for these, this massive army of IRS agents that are just drooling at the mouth to hit the streets running, I think you should probably go in and, and read about this before you go on the roof and start cheering and shouting from the rooftop how much you want the IRS to increase its budget by $80 billion. I think you should probably think about whether or not you want 87,000 new IRS agents out there. Because I'm telling you right now, you will regret it. And like I said, I don't want to hear Democrats complaining on social media when they're being audited for a $600 Venmo payment that they received. I don't want to hear it. I do not want to hear it. Because people say, oh yeah, but if it's an audit, I don't cheat on my taxes, so I ain't got nothing to worry about. (laughs) No, no. You don't get it. I, apparently, you've, you've, you've never been audited before. Anytime the IRS comes to audit you, it is a freaking nightmare. It's a nightmare. You will have to hire an attorney. There's no doubt about it. And that attorney goes for eh, like three to $5,000. And so when the IRS comes knocking on your door saying, hey, you owe us $600. Hey, 600 bucks, you made this payment. And you're like, well, I don't have the receipt. I I don't even know what the money was for. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead. We're going to be doing an audit. And uh, if you don't pay the $600, we're going to be be back here knocking on your door with a warrant for your arrest. Or we're going to be back here knocking on your door wanting our money. So you know what you're going to do? You're going to pay the $600. Why? Because it's a lot easier paying $600 than paying $5,000 for a tax attorney. It is, it's incredible to me 
how Democrats support this stuff. It's like, dude, like you are cheering for your own demise. You're cheering for your own destruction. It doesn't make sense. Like these people are so hypnotized. They are so brainwashed by the leftist rag Pravda media that they are actively cheering for the 87,000 IRS agents. And they're like, yay, this is great. Yes, go get those rich and wealthy. Go get those rich and wealthy. And you know what's going to happen? In a year from now, they're going to be like, yeah, well, you know, the rich and wealthy, they got us all tied up and we got this, we got 70,000 extra IRS agents and we're going to need some income. We got we to pay for these 70,000 agents. So boys, go out there and get them. And then here they come knocking on your door. I'm telling you, dude, that's what's going to happen. These people are nuts for supporting this. And so personally, I think you should probably just take the $14.5 billion from the IRS and give it to Israel. Okay? So here's your ultimatum. You either take the money from the IRS army that is going to be knocking on your door in about a year for a $600 Venmo payment you received, and you give that to Israel, or you allow the government to print $14.5 billion like they're asking. And then you pay more for groceries, more for gas, inflation goes up, interest rates go up, and the economy gets worse and worse. So how about that ultimatum? So let me see here. Hmm, it's kind of difficult. I don't know. Maybe take the money from the IRS? And the Democrats be like, oh, no, you can't take the money from the IRS. We need those agents. Those agents are going after the rich. Mm hmm. Sure, they are. Get back to me in about a year after you get that knock on the door. And, the, and another thing, like, Israel asked for $10 billion, right? And mind you, Joe Biden and, and Blinken offered aid a day after it happened. It's like, whoa, dude, like, they didn't even ask for any yet. And you're already talking about cutting a check? Like, maybe you should ask the American people first. Like, hey, you know, they need our help. They may need our help. What do you guys think? No, Joe Biden just like, hey, we got your back, man. It's like, wait a minute, dude. You, like, it's our money. It's like these people, it's, it's always easier spending other people's money. Always. I mean, think about it. Somebody gives you your, their credit card. Are you really going to care what you buy at the store? This was something Thomas Sowell talked about. It's always easier spending somebody else's money. And this is exactly why we're in $33 trillion in debt. Is because for 30 years, nobody cared what the government was spending their money on. Why? Because it didn't affect their lives. It had no impact on them. It didn't have an impact on them because they were just printing the money. But now that the American people are starting to feel it in their pockets, they're like, whoa, why are you guys spending all this money? Now people are starting to ask questions. Now the American people got the bill in the mail. And they're like, whoa, now we're going to have to cut some spending here. And so this next week or two is going to be a battle with Mike Johnson and the Republicans. All the American people ask is that you just stand and fight. That is it. And if the government has to shut down, then I'm pretty sure the American people could give a flying shit if the government shuts down. Ask the American people, hey, we can either shut the government down or we can print more money, increasing your inflation, causing your groceries and everything else to go up more. What do you think the American people are going to say? Shut it down. And that's exactly what Republicans need to do. Send the bill over there and then tell Democrats, if you don't want to sign it, you don't want to pass it, that's fine. You explain to the American people why the government's shutting down. And then what Democrats are going to have to do is explain to the American people, yes, we are not signing this bill and we are allowing the government to shut down because we do not want to decrease funding from the IRS. The American people are going to look at them like they're nuts. Like, whoa, you're going to shut our government down because you don't want to take $14.5 billion from an $80 billion budget you just gave the IRS? No. Hell no. The American people aren't buying that. But of course, you know, Democrats are going to lie, spin, gaslight, misrepresent, whatever it is they got to do. They're going to blame Republicans, which I think is incredible considering how Democrats have had five bills in their possession. They haven't done anything for three years because they don't want to do anything. Everything is political, folks. 
There's only one side trying to fix things here. That is it. And I'm not talking about the Uniparty. I'm talking about the conservatives like Mike Johnson, Matt Gates. There's the majority of the Republican Party is trying to fix this disaster the Uniparty got this country in. There's only one side trying to fix things here, folks. One side. There's one side destroying and one side trying to fix it. It is an unsustainable situation. And so this is why it feels like we are in a hamster wheel going nowhere fast. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys had a great Halloween. I hope you guys got a lot of candy. I mean, I hope your kids got a lot of candy, <laughs> especially in, uh, in this Bidenomics. Man, Halloween took a big hit from Bidenomics, man. The Biden administration even managed to ruin Halloween. Isn't that incredible? Everything this administration touches, it turns to crap. And this is exactly why if I was Netanyahu and I was the Israeli army, I would tell Joe Biden to get as far away from this situation as possible. Nobody wants to take advice from a guy that has gotten every single major foreign policy issue wrong the last 40 years. Okay? I'm sorry. But if I was Israel, if I was Netanyahu, if I was the Israeli military, the IDF, I wouldn't even take advice from the United States. But just like we said in the last episode, the Biden administration is trying to play both sides of this. They don't want to lose. Everything they see is about getting elected. Everything is about votes. They're trying to play both sides. They know if they come out too strong for Israel, then it's going to piss the Palestinians off. If they come out too strong for Palestinians, it's going to piss their biggest donors off, the Jews. Which, why the Jewish people still vote Democrat is beyond me. But you know, look, I'm starting to see a pretty wild trend when it comes to Jews actually starting to see who their real allies are. And it's not the Biden administration. So, and besides, like I said, why does the Democrat Party even care about funding Israel? They're the biggest anti-Semites in the country. These people don't care about anybody but themselves. I'm not saying Republicans don't. But like I said, there's a... There is the majority of the, Remo of the Republican Party is trying to fix things here, man. The majority of the Republican Party is actually doing what the American people want, and that is cutting spending. You know, Democrats want to sit there and talk about how climate change is our biggest existential threat. It's debt. If we go into debt, if we go bankrupt, there's not going to be a country left to care about climate change. How, how bad do you think the climate's going to get then? Like, these people are just stupid. Our country is ran by very, very stupid people. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. I'm going to leave these articles in my podcast description. So, during the next few days or the next couple weeks, this between this, this uh, debt battle, just make sure you remind the Democrats who's going to be getting audited with these 87,000 new IRS agents. And don't let them forget. I'll be leaving all the articles in my podcast description, and in those articles has all the statistics, all the analytics, it's got all the charts, it's got everything you need. If you want to explain to a Democrat the lie that they are perpetrating onto the American people about the IRS only targeting people making over 400000 get onto my podcast description. I left it all there for you for exactly that reason. So I will leave that in there. If you guys want to get a hold of me, Get a hold of me, Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. And as always, I want you guys to have a good day. Don't eat too much of your kids' candy like I'm getting ready to do here in about five minutes. I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you. God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.